just talk to analog converter, we're going to look at two ways to achieve this. First of all, we're using a summing amplifier, and secondly, using a multiplexer. So using a summing amplifier, uh, this is made up of a summing amplifier, the formula for this, given the voltage at this point here, and it's given below. And then we follow that with an inverting amplifier with a gain of minus one. It means that the voltage here is just uh, multiplied by minus one. So combine these together, gives us the output of the system based on input voltages A, B, and C uh, using this formula. Now the resolution of this is going to be the smallest change in output, and that's going to be due to the least significant bit using the uh, convention we're going to say that A is the least significant bit. So when that's high, it's how many volts we get at V out. And treating this as, uh, looking at this as in the inverting amplifier, we just got uh, when this, uh, whatever voltage we've got here, multiplied by RF over RA will give us the voltage there. And VA is going to be 5 volts in order to test what the resolution is going to be. So these are digital signals that are either going to be 5 volts or 0 volts. Uh, to get the range, uh, this will give us a maximum number equivalent to the number 7. So 111 will give us 7. So it's going to be the output is going to be 7 times whatever the resolution is there. Alternatively, we could set all of these equal to 5 volts and plug it into the formula. Numerical example then, so we've got 100k for uh, resistor A and we've got 10k for the feedback resistor here. So the resolution is going to be RF over RA times the voltage at A. Let's set that to be 5 volts and plug in the values for the resistors. So when VA is high, the output is going to be 0.5 volts. To work out what RB has got to be, if this is the units, this will represent the twos. So when this is high, it's got to represent double the voltage that the voltage at A does. So in other words, it's got to represent one volt at the output. So we've plugged the numbers in, we rearrange the equation, and we get RB as 50k. So we've got the ones, the twos, C represents the fours. So what we do, uh, 0.5 volts, that's going to represent one volt, this is going to represent two volts. So we plug in two volts to the equation for this one. When that's five volts, that's two volts at the end plug it in and we end up that we've got 25k here. And if we've got a fourth input representing the eights, then we'd use the 12.5k in here. Using a multiplexer, in many ways it's simpler. We just need a resistor chain to set the voltages that we want at the output and we want to choose between. And we use the digital input coming in here to the address of the multiplexer. So if the input is naught, naught, then the output's naught volts. 0, 0.1 gives us 1 volt out, 1 0 gives us 2 volts out, and 1 1 gives us 3 volts out. We'll look at making a larger uh, multiplexer later. Using positive and negative voltages, I've switched the order of these around a little bit just to make it uh, a bit clearer. Uh, but what we've got is, um, using 2's complement here, we've got 0 represents 0 volts, 0 1 represents 1 volts, and 2's complement giving us 1 1 for minus 1 volt, 1 0 for minus 2 volts. And we can see that changing the address just change, changes how many volts we get out of our system here. Extending to more levels, all you need is uh, a large multiplexer. So with three, uh, three inputs here, three digital inputs, we've now got a three-bit digital to analog converter. We just need eight different voltages that we can pick off. The advantage of using a multiplexer is you can do positive and negative numbers. Um, and... Uh, so, so that's it.